la la. A public parking lot financed by parking meters. But this parking lot is free. So somewhere else in this city there are parking meters and people are paying to park right now. Like, oh man, come on. So that I can park for free. It's bold. It's a little crazy. It's genius. It's the sometimes vlog, yeah, yeah. It's a vlog that happens sometimes, and sometimes it happens down here in Old Town Orange, California. I love old towns because I love old timey things, like this old timey ice machine here at Rod's Liquor. Like I love all kinds of old timey things, ancient Egypt old timey things, colonial America old timey things. Pretty much all the way up till the 1960s. Look how old this building is, it's got the tin roof there and the liquor stores inside but this right here this must be what 1930s or something like that no maybe later but it's got that whole old coin operated get your bag of ice thing going on not sure exactly what year a machine like this would be I don't think this works anymore it's a pretty cool relic of the old times and I just love that red white and blue theme it reminds you of a simpler time in America the before time the long long ago. It's weird because other than a few old ladies hunting for antiques, the Orange Circle used to be pretty much a ghost town on the weekdays. Now the colleges down here have gotten bigger, the neighborhood has gotten hipper and younger, and the times they are a changing. Look right here, they're putting in an Earth Cafe organic coffees and fine teas. Which is great because they're restoring this old building here and it's also great because they're providing an alternative to the Starbucks over here in this corner. I mean, before that Earth Cafe was coming along, the only alternative to this Starbucks right here was the other Starbucks over there in that white building. Gang, you know your neighborhood's coming up when you've got three coffee places. And only two of them are Starbucks. <laughs> wow. Now we come down here to go antique shopping, you and I, all of the time, but today I'm not here to antique shop. I'm actually here to use the restroom. And my favorite one is inside of here, the Orange Circle Antique Mall. Uh, uh, uh. <sighs> oh, that's so much better. <sighs> well, don't judge me. Everybody's gotta go. That's one thing I always notice about movies and books. They never stop to mention when people went to the bathroom. Like Frodo walked all the way to Mordor and he never had to pee. Was there just no restroom on the Millennium Falcon? And how did Darth Vader go to the bathroom? These are the questions that keep me up at night. Well that and the ghostly image burned into my head forever of these people. Dun 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 dun. Murderer. Oh, I love old photographs. Like, look at this. Is this a dad proud of his son going off to war? That's awesome. Ooh. Or how about this? It's somebody's Aunt Lucy here on an old postcard. You ever think about all these people? Forgotten. Unknown, maybe. They all had stories, and none of them had vlogs. Oh, check this out. This is cool. Devil mask dude with lasso. Only $25. Man, some of these booths are so cool and so well themed. Ooh, this says follow us on Instagram, but there's no more cards. How will I follow them on Instagram now? Here's a good one, dude at work photo. Whoever labeled these is my hero. Dude with a devil mask, dude at work. This one should say, dude getting hitched. Check out the glasses on grandma. That is a cool picture. Oh, here's the name, Citrus Coast Trading Company or Trading Co. Find their Instagram and tell them I sent you. Some of this stuff in here is pretty darn cool. Up, oh, look, a sign from backstage at Disneyland with Professor Ludwig von Drake. A Scrooge ornament. It was so cool seeing Scrooge McDuck out in Disneyland Paris as a character that you could meet. You don't see a lot of Scrooge related merchandise these days. I always think I'm gonna come in here just for one second but then there's always so much cool stuff to look at. Just so much funky vintage goodness. Look at this box right here. Unfortunately, there's no key, so we can't open it. We don't know what kind of secrets this girl left in her treasure box. I love learning about the old days, like from old books Ooh, or vintage magazines. Like, look at this. We got old Sports Illustrated magazines here. And we won't tell anyone about that one. Oh, you can! Oh, hey. 
I need that. There was something I was gonna do today, but all this stuff is making me forget. Huh. Maybe something in here will strike my memory. I love the mid-century stuff in here. Like, I really love this table. Not sure I'm ever gonna have a house where having a table like this is really appropriate, but that is some cool old stuff. The problem with me if I went for an old-timey thing in an apartment or even if I got a small house is I wouldn't know which era to stick with because I'm into all kinds of stuff. Civil War era, 1940s and 50s, but I love some of that funky, colorful 1960s stuff too. And obviously I'm also into tiki stuff and Disney stuff. I better just let someone else decorate. Whoa, this reminds me of the old 80s pink aisle in Toys R Us. The old school Care Bears here and oh, what the heck was this thing called? Uh, uh, Rainbow Bright? Is that from Rainbow Bright? Wow, my little pony. You guys remember this little my little pony? You guys remember these? No freaking way. Muppet Babies. Nobody ever remembers the Muppet Babies. That is hands down my favorite 80s cartoon right there, The Muppet Babies. Most of the time when people ask me, I usually say Ninja Turtles or something like that because I always forget about The Muppet Babies. But that was a great show. Oh dang, is that Malibu Barbie's Corvette? <gasps> a remote control version. Dang, and look at Barbie's boat. Oh, this thing also had some sort of battery powered feature. Barbie had all the good stuff. Oh, and look at these shoes. Dang. It's like 80s girl paradise in here. It reminds me of going over to my neighbor's house and they'd babysit us and they we had to play Barbies and stuff with them. I hated like every second of it though, you know, cause I was a, cause I was a man. I totally never watched that 80s Barbie cartoon or the um, My Little Pony or the Care Bears, like ever. Like even when it came on, there was nothing else to watch. I totally never watched it and sang along with any of the theme songs, so. You can just get that out of your head right now. Oh dang, these take me back too. My Nana had all of the California raisins. She gave them all to me. We used to play with them, you know, the little rubber figurines. She gave them all to me and I sold them on eBay for almost nothing. I think they're still worth basically almost nothing, but still. Rosebud. Yep, I'm definitely getting distracted. What was I trying to remember? I was gonna go somewhere. Something to do with Disney. Maybe this case will bring something up in my memory. Hmm. This building here looks familiar. That's it, that's where I was gonna go. I was gonna go to the real version of this building. They have this building at Disneyland. The White Rabbit's house. Oh, you don't believe me, huh? You've never noticed the White Rabbit's house at Disneyland? Oh, well then you definitely weren't looking hard enough, cause believe me, it's here. It's right here in Fantasyland, right out in the open. But you would not believe how many times when I post a picture of this or put this in a vlog, even for a split second, people tell me I have never, ever, ever noticed that before. <laughs> Mr. Rabbit! This is the best part when he opens it with. Mr. Rabbit? Mr. Usually he's still here because he's always late for stuff. Oh, that's okay. I know how to get in the back. Oh, there's Alice right there. No, the reason most people normally don't notice the White Rabbit's house is because of this. All this traffic behind me. The White Rabbit's house is sitting right behind the exit to the Alice in Wonderland dark ride. And the exit to the Mad Tea Party teacups. And the exit to the Mad Hatter store. And it's a little ways back from the road. But if you want to find it, whenever you're looking at Monster of the Whale, just turn around and head that way. See, you have the entrance to the teacups here, the exit to the Mad Hatter here, and then you can only see the side of it, the White Rabbit's house. I was just going through old Instagram pictures and I had a picture of this, and there were at least like three comments underneath that were like, I can't find that anywhere. Well, it doesn't help that there's always people walking in front of it and sometimes even sitting in front of it. I take it back, that guy wasn't sitting. He was playing Pokemon Go. Everybody's playing that game. Anyway, don't worry if you come here and he doesn't answer the door. Like I said, there's a back way and you can still see the inside of the White Rabbit's house. See his little window right there? That's the White Rabbit's bedroom. And we are gonna see inside. Just step inside the Mad Hatters. And not only will you see some very choice Disney Mickey ear hat things, including this little number. <laughs> Johnny Depp? But if you look around long enough, past all the Mad Hatters hats, over here in the corner next to the Cheshire Cat, hidden in that mirror there, see him? <laughs> Who are you? You will see, just in that little window we saw from outside, the White Rabbit's bedroom. 
Look at that. Isn't that cute? It's a little bunny bedroom with a little bunny bed and a little bunny mirror, a little bunny dresser. Oh, look, and there's pictures of his relatives up there. Kind of weird that he's roommates with the Mad Hatter in here. You'd have to be crazy to want to be roommates with that guy. But it really is in there. The White Rabbit's house. Huh. No wonder he ever answers the door. He's so used to trespassers. Well, now that I've seen it, I suppose I can head on home. Nothing left to do here at all. I was just thinking, though. Isn't Fantasyland cute? I mean, obviously I prefer it when it's empty, but even with the summer crowds, it's still pretty magical. I mean, where else can you watch a whale swallow a boat full of tourists? Other than Alaska or something, or maybe SeaWorld? But do their whales wink at you? Come on now, huh? So many cute and magical little spots here. Like seriously, it's like a zillion degrees out here. And there are tons and tons of people. But even so, the original Disneyland has a charm that just can't be beat. <laughs> Tally ho! Mariliana went to nowhere in particular. I especially love that the original Disneyland has so many of its original dark rides. Snow White, Alice in Wonderland, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. And of course, probably the most popular ride in the whole park, Peter Pan's Flight. I almost never ride on Peter Pan. Because unlike in Paris or at Walt Disney World, this Peter Pan's Flight has no fast pass line. And just like every other version of this ride, it is exceedingly popular. Would you look at the size of that queue line? Seriously, look at the length of this line for a simple dark ride out here in about a zillion degrees in the July sunshine. The cast members do a really, really good job of making sure this line keeps moving. But even still, even at the last five minutes before the park closes, even in the first 20 minutes when it opens, you will never really see a wait time shorter than this. It's not like it's a three hour long line or anything like that. It's just always consistently at least 40 minutes long. 40 minutes in the bright summer sunshine for a three or four minute ride. Man, that is crazy. But the ride is so popular that people happily wait in that line. So popular even that they have a Peter Pan's flight in every Disney theme park except for Hong Kong, I think. I've been on the one in Paris, been on the one at Disney World, Rarely do I go on this one. Mostly just because of the epic crazy line and no fast pass. <laughs> Boy, am I glad that you guys don't want to see the inside of that ride. Wait, what? What? Are you crazy? You want me to wait in line and take you inside of there? 40 minutes. In the sun? You must be out of your mind. No stinking way. I do not love you guys that much. Don't even think about asking me to get in this line right here. There's no way that I'll do it. I'm warning you, there's just no way I'm gonna spend 40 minutes standing out in the sun. The ride just can't be worth it, come on. You guys better remember that I did this for you. Come on, everybody. before. That was totally worth it. Think of a wonderful thought. I understand now. I understand why people wait in the line so long to meet Peter Pan. It was so magical. The power of flight. And did you see the hidden Mickey there on Big Ben? Look again. And the way Peter Pan's name was spelled out with the block on the nursery floor. Oh, that's delightful. Oh, I love you, Fantasyland. Oh, let's see here. Oh my gosh, it's time to go. That ate up all my time. Curse you, Peter Pan's line. I'll get even with you, even if it's the last thing I ever do. <laughs> Hook is such a blockhead. Ooh, look at this hungry fella. Remember these guys from my five weird things in Fantasyland video? They're still here. My favorite is the pig-like Mr. Smee over here. <laughs> or as I like to think of him, Mr. Sue. That's not funny. Time to be moving along. See the original.
original Disneyland has square trees too, guys. Not as um, elaborate looking as the ones in Paris, but still, we've got some. Au revoir, Fantasyland! Speaking of Disneyland Paris, we're working on editing a new Random Land video of the Pirates of the Caribbean in Paris. It's probably my favorite Disney ride in the world now. And it only took two months for my friend Oscar to edit it and two of his computers exploding. Speaking of which, a lot of people have been asking me, what's going on with your other YouTube channel? And I posted a long thing about it on my Facebook page today. Oh, that's a Facebook.com slash Justin Scarred. Two R's. That will hopefully clear up some of the confusion. For the moment, though. TTFN, Walt Disney. Thank you for your land. Allie started her new beauty school today, so I'm gonna go pick her up for moral support. But I'm glad we got to have a little fun at the park together, gang. For our next adventure, we're gonna go somewhere completely different, so make sure you're subscribed. Be sure to check out my Instagram and my Snapchat. We got some sweet t-shirts and hats at livefastdieportoutspreadshirt.com. I also have this thing called Patreon. And if every subscriber I had gave me 50 cents a month, believe me, there'd be a lot more videos from Disneyland Paris. So check that out if you want to help support videos far and wide in the future. Nice try, buddy. For the moment, you're stuck here with me. And it's a good thing too, right, Jimberly? Because what would you do without me? What have I told you about not touching my gun? Jeez, sorry. Ugh, I can't stay mad at you. Literally, it's my job to stand here and be nice. Oh, I love you too, Jimberly. Well, anyway, we came, we saw, we rode a little. I gotta help a girl lug her stuff home from beauty school and uh, comfort a sick child at home. In short, I've gotta go and do my duty so that I can go home and sleep well. But if you subscribe to either or both of my channels, I'll see you guys in Random Land. Bye-bye. Oh, do you know what? We can't stop here. There's something on the way home I want to show you guys. Something that I thought was actually pretty important. Now, as those of you who've been following me for a while know, I've had my fair share of troubles in this life. I've had my share of crazy injuries and health problems and dietary issues, not being able to eat gluten. I've been cheated on. I've been used and abused and spat upon. Went through a crazy divorce where I lost all my stuff and my house and my kid and everything like that. Been broke a million times, been in a crazy car wreck before. And believe me, it's been a long and crazy tumultuous climb out of that kind of stuff. I've had a lot of help and I've had a lot of people who have like lent a hand with it. But I never, never would have recovered from a a lot of the stuff that has happened to me if I hadn't been on the quest for positivity. The whole PMA thing is super, super important. I have never said that I'm the most positive person in the world and that I can always be positive and that I'm perfect. On the contrary, I can be super, super negative. I can be foul mouth and impatient. And I used to be very, very, very pessimistic and cynical. But that's exactly why I'm on the quest for positivity, because I'm the kind of person who needs to be. Look, we don't all just wake up as Fred McMurray or Pollyanna. Some of us have to really work at being positive. Even with me, you know, I'd finally hit this stride and I started traveling around the world a little bit and making more videos and things were going a little better. But then life throws you some curveballs, you know. Ali moved down here a little sooner than expected. And luckily I was able to help with getting her into a new beauty school and being able to get her some transportation down here and whatnot. But as with any change, good or bad, along with the change comes a certain degree of stress. And even I, Mr. Super Quest for Positivity, I could find myself going like, Oh no, I gotta do this, 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 and that, the other thing. Even when you're not actually trying to be negative and nothing's technically going wrong. If you're not careful, the ordinary stresses of life can make you sort of slip back into one of those things where you're stressful, you're grumpy, maybe you're not even getting enough sleep, it could be anything, and you start to get back in that mental pattern of like negativity, always looking, oh, I got this to do, and I have this to do, and I have this to do, or this is wrong, or that's wrong, I don't have enough money here, I don't have enough time here. And if you always assume the worst, if you choose to always see the bad in every person in every situation, then that's how your life ends up bad. All this bad stuff is going to keep happening to you and you're going to be sitting there going, why? Why is this happening to me? But speaking from my own personal experience, if you choose to see the good in everything and you actively try to see the good in every situation, as sincerely tough as that sounds, if you're truly persistent and keep chipping away at that negativity, keep on the positive side, you're not just going to see your attitude change for the better, I promise, and at least in my own personal experience, you're gonna see your situation change for the better too. So go for it, do the things you love, surround yourself with the stuff that you like. As my friend Tyler would say, let your happy be as loud as it can be, and continue the quest for positivity. After all, love is better than hate, kindness is better than cruelty, and wherever possible, forgiveness is better 
vengeance and revenge. Believe me guys, I've seen a thing or two and had some crazy hate thrown my way and think about it, I have one heck of a platform. And believe me, with some of the stuff that comes at me, if I can stay positive, I know you can do it too. You can do it. So try not to let the stress get to you. Because after all, like I saw on this sign this morning, worry is the dark room in which negatives are developed. Worry is the dark room in which negatives are developed. Think it over. Quest for positivity. See you guys later. Isn't that crazy that that thing said that? It was just the message I needed to hear. It's almost like it was a sign or something. What did you say? You said you're gonna love this. I have a feeling I'm not going to love this. Why? <laughs> it's so cold, Allie. Why? Why? That's just the top half. What? Should I start singing songs? <laughs> what is this leather face? <laughs> What's happening? No! Slimy. I think it's working. Look, I, I feel good. You look good. I think it's almost done because the llama, the llama wore off. You look good. Dang, girl. You look like you're ready to like hide the victims, you know? If I ran out. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <Stop> <laughs> Look what I can do. <laughs> no, I have to get it off. I had to fold my nose. What was that? I don't know. What was that? How come yours is on all perfect and I look like, look what happened? <laughs> I quit. I quit. On my eyes. <laughs> well, if you would just chill out. I can't. Have we known each other? Two 
New Year's. And have you ever known me to be able to chill out? No. Exactly. I'm feeling much better now. That's love right there. Fixing my creepy death mask. Alright, here we go. It's time for it to come off. Ready? Oh, I'm a whole new man! 